Hey, this is Kevin Bass from TheDietWars.com, and I am today, as every day, here to discuss and interpret the latest and greatest of new scientific findings, controversies, and debates with respect to health, nutrition, lifestyle, etc. With the ultimate goal of providing you the tools to understand the latest science and discussions about the science in the media and apply this new knowledge to your life to maximize and optimize your longevity and reduce your risk of disease and death. <laughs> so uh, without any further ado, I want to talk about a very interesting bit of information that I found recently, which is that added sugar intake in the United States is going down, and this can be seen using four different data sets, four independent data sets. Added sugar in the United States has in fact been going down drastically for the past 20 years, and it continues to decline precipitously. Meanwhile, the obesity epidemic continues unabated. This suggests that uh, the obesity epidemic is more um, complicated and determined by other factors than simply the intake of added dietary sugar. Okay, to make this case, I'm gonna be using four data sets. First, the USDA data. Second, the United Nations Food and Agricultural Association or sorry, organization data, UNFAO. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey in Haines, and finally, corporate sales data. So data from the government in America, data from the, uh, uh, the United Nations, data from the, again, another separate part of the government, and then data from corporations. So data from everybody. And they all show the same thing. Sugar is going down while obesity goes up. So sugar is not the cause of the obesity epidemic. It is simply uh, maybe a contributor. But the, the, even that becomes more complicated as we discuss some other data that we're going to see in future parts, future episodes in this series, where we take apart the data about the obesity epidemic to explain why the obesity epidemic happened and why it didn't. Okay, so first, without further ado, we're going to talk about the USDA data. So very clearly, at around uh, the year 2000, we see a precipitous decline in the added sugars per day, such that the added sugars per day is nearly at the same level as in the 1970s. Okay, despite that, the obesity rate continues to go up. Well, isn't that something? But that's just the USDA, so what do the other data sets say. So now we're going to take USDA data on the left-hand side. Okay, here's USDA data. Now we're going to compare it to the US, sorry, the um, Food and Agricultural Association. Very similar trend. Now they use different methodologies and so the, the results are slightly different, but the trend is quite similar. Again, you get a reduction in sugar intake starting around the year 2000 and it declines quite precipitously to the point that it's nearly at the levels that it was in 1970. Hmm, that is interesting. I at least believe so. Okay, now let's look at the next bit of data from the NHANES, the National Health and Nutritional Survey. It's the, um, this is on sugar sweetened beverage intake, and this is from a 2018 paper. And despite entirely different methodologies compared to the USDA and the Food and Agriculture Association, we see the same story. In less than 15 years, self-reported sugar sweet beverage intake has more than halved. So you take the uh, eight ounce servings per day in children and adolescents from two to 19 years old, they're, they're consuming almost 2.5 of these. And in just 15 years later, they're consuming just one of these servings. It's a dramatic reduction. And the same also goes for adults, although to a lesser extent, and that makes sense because adults are, their behavior is less uh, malleable. So therefore they have a smaller reduction in intake. But they see much the same thing. They go from two, two servings to nearly one serving per day, a little above 
two to a little above one. So having their intake among adults older than 20 years. Just imagine what's going to happen when those children and adolescents get older, or on the other hand, what's going to happen to future ad- uh, generations of children and adolescents? Are they going to continue to consume fewer sugar sweetened beverages? And I believe so. Yet, yet as, we, as I pointed out, the obesity epidemic continues unabated. Now, here's another representation of the same data. This is self-reported consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages from inhanes. This is dramatic. For both sexes, among 2 to 19 years old, you're going from nearly 2.5 servings to 1 serving. For females, it's about from 2 to 2 to 1, or 2 to maybe 0.8. Okay? And, from, for, and you see the same thing among um, adults older than 20 years. Both sexes, from about 2 to about 1. Females start at about 1.7, and then they go down to about 0.8. So about a halving of for self-reported sugar-sweetened beverage intake, so people aren't drinking their Coca-Colas as much anymore. And let's now talk about another st- study, also from Inhanes. This time it's from a 2011 paper. Okay, We see a 25%, nearly 25% drop in reported total added sugar and sugar-sweetened beverage intake in just eight years. This is stopping at just 2008 as well. It's crazy. So we see all the way from total sugars goes from 20% of total energy almost down to about 17% in just eight years. Okay, 3% drop in eight years. And this stops at 2018. And the same goes for sugar sweetened beverages. Quite a drop. I wonder what happened for the total added sugars extrapolating all the way out to 2022. Would we be closer to 10%? I don't have that data yet. Somebody needs to write that paper. Finally, here's a study from last year showing the halving of total sugar intake, or I guess this is that paper I was just talking about, the halving of total sugar intake. Let's see if I can zoom out. The halving of total sugar intake, as well as sugar sweetened beverage intake over the past 15 years. Okay? All right. So all the way from maybe 2003 to 2015, we're going from, uh, you know, 210 calories per day from sugar sweetened beverages among people aged 2 to 19 years, all the way down to 2015 to uh, about 90 calories. Similar story we just told. Very similar story. Okay? And um, here's from soft drinks. It's a similar story. 2 to 19 years old. Soft drinks goes from about 130 calories all the way down to about 50 calories per day. Okay. For um, all beverages, the mean intake goes from about 475 calories all the way down to about 275 calories. Right. And the mean energy intake from the diet has also gone down. Okay, so yet the obesity epidemic continues unabated. Isn't that interesting? Um, Here is the next bit, the next paper from, actually it's from the same paper, showing a very similar thing. See if we can get a good good, uh, image of this. So among the, um, here's a breakdown among different groups. So some people, the proportion of people who are consuming no sugar-sweetened beverages at all, among people aged above two years old, scored from 40 to 60%, right? And the people who are consuming more than 24 is going from about 27% to about 10% of all people. 24 per day, 24 ounces. And among the other categories, they're going down a little bit or staying about the same. So 0 to 12 is going up slightly, and uh, 12 to 24 is going down. Okay, so very consistently, if you look at across all people, everybody's drinking fewer sugar sweetened beverages. And the similar trends are seen for people who are between 2 and 19 and older than 20. Okay, that's, that's in Haynes. Okay, now let's look at corporate sales data. 
We've looked at the USDA data, we've looked at the Food and Agricultural Association data, we've looked at the NHANES data, all use different methodologies. But what about the corporate sales beta data? Well, 2011's paper systematically organized and presented these data as well. And what we see in terms of volume, um, water has progressively replaced sugar drinks. And I put these labels on this figure because it helps us to see it easier. Bottled water has gone up over time, while uh, drinks, bottled water that's sold by Coca-Cola is gone up over time, while their sales data for uh, carbonates, for ready-to-drink tea, has gone down. I think ready-to-drink tea might have gone up slightly from like, you know, per person, uh, from like, 10 milliliters to 15 milliliters per day, but the sugar sweetened beverage has gone down much more dramatically than that. Maybe um, about um, like 25 milliliters. Okay, and Pepsi is the same story. More bottled water, less sugar sweetened beverages sold per, uh, per millimeter, milliliter. And now in general, Coca-Cola daily kilojoules of energy has gone from about 270, 206, 260, all the way down to about 230. So they've cut about 30, calories per day, um, and a lot of most of that has come from sugar sweet beverages. In fact, almost all of it has. Same thing for Pepsi. Pepsi's showing a similar drop in daily uh, kilojoules energy sold per person. Okay, so everybody's drinking fewer kilojoules per energy from PepsiCo. That's what the sales data show. So that's that's four different data sets. And in this case, Pepsi sold around 20% fewer calories in just 10 years and Coca-Cola around 15%. Nine more years have elapsed since this study was done. So, or actually, this is uh, 12 more years have elapsed since this study has been done. The study was finished, um, lose data finishing in 2010. If that trend continued from 2010 to 2022, and the other data sets suggest that it might have, then maybe a 25 to 40% reduction in total calories from these companies has, is going to be reported. Okay, so the present anti-sugar movement is not an anti-corporate movement started in recent years, but has been underway since well, before 2000, the year 2000. It's been a, it was around for a long time and people started really listening around that time of 2000. Meanwhile, obesity has skyrocketed. While I think that decreasing added sugar intake and, in, and implementing anti-sugar policies is a good idea for personal public health, I've discussed that in a recent video. I believe it, and if I haven't, I'm going to go add another video about that in just a moment. Um, obesity is, is about a lot more than just sugar. Indeed, as the USDA data show, the largest increase in calories in the food system has in fact come from fat, specifically salad and cooking oils, and we talked about this in the uh, part one of this series. This is part two. We talked about this in part one. If you want to go uh, bone up on your on your part one, you can look at that here and, and understand why salads and cooking oils have increased uh, the calorie intake and is probably larger response for the obesity epidemic, or at least foods containing these cal calories are. So has added sugar and soft drink intake been dramatically declining for the past 20 years? Yes. Has obesity been dramatically increasing for the last 20 years? Also, yes. Correlation is not causation, but if added sugar is the cause of the obesity epidemic, one wonders why the obesity epidemic did not start in 1970 or 1980, when added sugar intake was almost exactly the same as it is today in 2020. The data get even more interesting when you return to the United Kingdom, as we'll do in the next video. If you liked this one, uh, check me out at the.wars.com. That's my website. Also check me out on Patreon, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Kevin and Basque, VI, and in BASS please donate to Patreon. That would be much appreciated so I can continue to make these great videos. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the subscribe link at the bottom, the bottom right of this video screen so that you can then receive uh, the latest videos that are coming up on YouTube. Hit the notifications button. Make sure to turn on your notifications because that would be great too. Click share, share this video, share the series far and wide. That would be much appreciated and I think it would be helpful to people to understand what's actually happening in the food system so that people aren't misinformed and people aren't thinking things that are wrong. Um, make sure to leave a comment. Let me know. I want to get your feedback. Good or bad. Let me know what the good things I'm doing. Let me know what the bad things I'm doing. All of that is much appreciated. 
finally, um, make sure to uh, subscribe on the, the um, Apple Podcasts and on Spotify and on, of course, as I said, the YouTube channel. And then leave a rating or review on those two and leave a comment whenever you have the opportunity to do so. That would be much appreciated. And I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned a little bit. I do not <laughs> recommend consuming uh, you know, sugar-sweetened beverages. I don't think that's going to help your health whatsoever. I think it's a good thing to stop. But it's not the thing that's driving the obesity epidemic. And we're not going to solve the obesity epidemic by having this just anti-sugar attitude. It's just one part of the whole picture. And that's the conclusion of this video. Hope this was helpful. Hope this made sense. I hope you were persuaded. If you weren't, let me know. And we're going to keep working on you. So have a good one. Peace.